morning, Sunday school. Hope y'all having a good week and hope y'all just doing good. Keep God in y'all hearts. Everybody by your heads. Father God, we just thank you for waking us up early this morning and leading us on our way. Father God, I hope we just get somebody here listening. And we know that you love us, each each and every one of us, Father God. Father God, we just thank you. And then let's see another day, Father God. Father God, I just hope we get through this coronavirus pandemic, Father God. And Father God, and hope everybody bring the hatred out of their hearts, Father God. I just thank you for letting all of us come in today and serve you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The theme for today's, today's lesson is the Lord loves justice. The background, the Bible background coming from Isaiah chapter 61, verse 8 through the 12th verse. The printed text coming from Isaiah chapter 61, 8 through the 11th verse. And chapter 62, 2 through the 4th verse. The devotional reading is coming from Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1 through 9. Aim for change. By the end of this lesson, we will explain the hope of vindication for the righteousness and faithful desire of salvation and restoration for the God people and commitment to make it just the seasons in everyday life. Keep in mind, for I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offerings, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 8, coming from the KJV version of the Bible. Teachers may take charge of their classes. Good morning, Pre-K. I've been missing you guys and can't wait to see you. Now I am about to read you a story about three people, Keith, Carl, and Mr. Washington. The toy airplane is mine, said Keith. No, said Carl, it's mine. Mr. Washington looked at the two boys. You both say the airplane is yours, said Mr. Washington. Maybe we should break it in two and give it to each of you. Fine with me, said Carl. Now I'm gonna stop right there. Mr. Washington suggested that he should break the airplane into two pieces. Question, what do you think will happen next? Please don't, said Keith with tears. My dad made it for me. Go ahead and give it to him, said Carl. Well, I think I know who the real owner is. Mr. Washington smiled and gave it to Keith. Now, if you had something that belonged to you and somebody took it, how would you feel? Again, I say, the teacher said that the airplane belonged to Keith and Carl got upset. So he decided to Say, if I break the airplane into two, you get a piece and you get a piece, how would they feel? So, what I'm saying is, if it doesn't belong to you, you should give it back. Because one of the Ten Commandments say, thou should not steal. The subject of our Bible story is justice is done. God had given King Solomon special wisdom. One day, two women came to him arguing over a baby. Each woman claimed the baby was hers. Solomon told his servant to bring a sword. He said that since both women claimed the baby was theirs, he would cut the baby in two pieces and give each woman a piece. When the first woman heard what Solomon said, she was very heartbroken and said, and Solomon could give the baby to the other woman. The second woman said she did not care if Solomon killed the baby. Solomon knew that the first woman was the real mother because she cared for the baby. He told the servant to give the baby to her. God gave Solomon wisdom to know to do what is right. So, if you guys can remember in the story about Keith, Carl, and Mr. Washington when they were fussing over the airplane, Keith cared about the airplane because his dad made it for him, but Carlton, he didn't care. But Mr. Washington knew who it belonged to because he cared about it. So basically, the story is telling us to do what is right. If something doesn't belong to you, you should always give it back. 
because one of the Ten Commandments states, thou shalt not steal. In conclusion, we all should be wise. I love you guys, and I can't wait to see you again. Our printed text today is coming from Isaiah, the 61st chapter, 8 through 11 verses. Praise God. Good morning, Junior Ways of Teller. Once again, we meet by uh, video. Uh, we're hoping that soon God will find fit to let us all come back together as one in his presence. As usual, I like to start off by saying, Father God, we come this morning when I hear bow and our heart humble. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to be here again today. Father, we ask you to keep us in your keeping care. Bless the sick and the shed in. Bless the bereaved family. Father, bless our leaders this morning. Let them see fit, uh, see faith in what to do by leading us into this uh, pandemic. pandemic. Um, these and other blessings we ask in our Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Okay, our lesson today is talking about uh, Lord, the Lord's love for justice. And when we start talking about justice, we are talking about what we do fair to each other. Um, God does not like for us to take um, matters in our own hand and for us talking about discipline somebody from what has happened to us. Let him be the judge, the jury, and the convicted, if there's to be a conviction. Um, loving one another, justice is all about we keeping each other uh, in faith. In the future, we shall gather again. Uh, until then, be safe, take care of yourselves. Um, don't do nothing crazy out there, Junior Ways, because, you know, we are. God's children. Take care of the old folks too. Thank you. Good morning. The subject of our lesson this morning is the Lord loves justice. Coming from Isaiah 61, 8 through 11, and 62, 2 through 4. Our aim for change this morning states, by the end of the lesson, we will explain the hope of vindication for the righteous and faithful, desire salvation and restoration for God's people, and commit to making just decisions in everyday life. This lesson comes in at the right times in our lives, especially with all the uncertainty surrounding COVID-19. Some of us are feeling like the Israelites where in the book of Isaiah, they felt forsaken and thought that their land was rendered desolate during the exile as a consequence of their sin. The God reminds us in the eighth verse of Isaiah 61 that he will make an everlasting covenant with us for he is the Lord that loved just I'm sorry, for he is the Lord that loved judgment and hate robbery for burnt offerings. Now the difference between God's promise and his covenant and man's covenant is he keeps his promises. Second Corinthians, the first chapter 20 verse tells us that the promises of God, all of his promises are yes and amen. Knowing this, we can stand on God's promises and know that without a shadow of doubt that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Even in the midst of this gloomy situation, there is a ray of hope, and that hope is Jesus. But we also have to be obedient to the will of God in order for things to turn around and to see justice. He tells us in Isaiah, the 55th chapter, 6 through the 11th verse, to seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from the heaven, and returneth not, but water the earth, and make it bring forth bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall the word that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper into that thing which I sent it. So instead of us focusing on the injustices of COVID-19, this is the prime time to seek the Lord while he may be found. Humble yourselves and pray. Turn from your wicked ways so the Lord will hear from heaven and forgive our sins and heal the land. Psalms 24 tells us that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. 
the world and they that dwell therein, which tells us that he is aware of what is going on and he, he will render justice in due season. So turn off the TVs, get out of the media and get into the word of God, read your Bibles, repent because the word of God says in Isaiah 26, three through four, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because he trusts in the Lord. Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. To, for therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Be still and know that God is God. He will exalt among the heathen. He will be exalted in the earth, because the Lord of hosts is with us, and he loves justice. Thank you. Good morning. We are studying our Sunday school lesson for April the 26th. We are glad that you're able to join Taylor Chapels in this Sunday school hour. Our subject this morning is the Lord loves justice. And our scripture will be coming from Isaiah 61, 8 through 11 and 62 verses two through four. Our aim for change. It is to explain the hope of vindic vindication while being righteous and faithful. The aim is to remain, remind the people of God, salvation and his restoration. The aim is to stir the zeal to be committed in making a decision that will affect our everyday lifestyle. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your blessings you've bestowed beyond measure. Help us today to overcome the tricks and the schemes and the lies and the distractions of Satan. Help us to be focused on your holy word, which is the spirit of truth, salvation, and righteousness. Help us to allow you to be the God of our life. Amen. Our scripture, Isaiah 61, For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully reward my people for their suffering and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known and honored among the nation. All shall realize that they are the people of God and he has blessed them. Let me tell you how happy God has made us. For he has clothed us with a garment of salvation and he has draped us with the robe of righteousness. And we are a bridegroom in his wedding suit and a bride with her jewels. The Lord shows the nation of the world his justice. All will praise him. He is righteous and he shall be like a budding tree, like a garden in the early spring, full of young plants and spring up everywhere. Isaiah 61, two through four. He has sent me to tell those who moan that the time of God is faithful has come to them and that this day the wrath of their enemies will succeed. To all who moan in Israel, he will give beauty for ashes, joy instead of moaning, praise instead of heaviness, for God has planted them like a strong and grateful oak for their own glory. And they shall rebuild the ancient run, repairing the city long ago, destroy, reviving them, though they may have leaned through many generations. Our focus point this morning will be verses um, 8 and 11. Isaiah the prophet tells of the coming years of the anointed Savior, Savior Jesus Christ. He tells how Jesus was to be a bridge between heaven and earth for his people who were oppressed. Jesus is the good news to the poor. He's the healer and the mender to the brokenhearted. He's light in darkness. His love for those in bondage, and he is the hope of their deliverance. He's heaven's peace in a world of earthly pain and tears and sorrow. He's our savior of the spiritual rest. He teaches us our joy and moaning will be turned into praise. God is the hope of righteousness. He loves justice and judgment. He hates the robbers and the wrongdoer. When we're faithful to him, he reward us with an everlasting covering. Therefore, 
God expects us to be agents of his, he is known as the body of Christ. The church where he should be the head. He expects us to be the agent, the church that Christ, that we are Christ-like in the community, in our neighborhood, and in the world. He expects us to be models that, accept, that exemplify how to choose God and how to choose good versus bad. He expects us to be models that knows how to be a winner and not a loser. He expects us to be mature enough to recognize what it is to have and to have not, to be content in our every situation. He expects us to be in control and of not keeping up with the Joneses. He expects us to be a model that knows that the wages of sin is death. And if we choose God, we will have the gift of life. He expects us to have wisdom to know that the best model is to have a zeal to choose being saved instead of being lost. If we truly desire God's love for justice, as we are the church and the children of God, we must practice being effective leaders and members who are genuine servants of God who are good stewards in the word, in our words, and in our thoughts and our deeds. Our justice must stand out and above the crowd by practicing what we preach, by talking what we know, by testifying what we see. We must not be a member of the club that's called busybodies, or the gossip club, or liars, or backbiters, and the list can go on. For God have chose us today. He has chose us to be called with the vision for justice. You are called out to do a work for the Lord. You are chosen to be a witness for the Lord. Your eyes are called to see the need and not the lust of the world. Your mind is called to be like Jesus. Therefore, no evil imagination should be against one another. Your hearts are called to be slow to anger and be peacemaker known as the children of God. Your ears are called to be swift to listen, knowing that when we listen, we can be on one accord because being on one accord means strife will not have a place for division. Being on one accord means love will bring unity. Being on one accord means we can touch and agree and make Jesus the center of our joy. Wherever Jesus is, love will abide, and unity will prevail, and the devil must fail. Your feet are called to walk in unity and not run swift to shed innocent blood. Your lips and your mouth are called to worship God and not slander and spread lies. Your hands are called to build up and not tear down. We are called as children of God to be on a road called justice, a journey that we must take step by step, day by day. We must prepare others to see the kingdom of God. We must have a vision to run the race with patience because 99 and a half won't do. Without a vision, we will perish. But with a vision, we'll know that the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but to he that endures to the end. God wants us to be chosen, to love us and one another. He wants us to abide in justice. He wants us to be able to look at the weaknesses of others with compassion and not with accusation. He wants us to know that they are not doing, not focus on what they are not doing or what they should be doing. That's not the issue. And if we really be honest with ourselves, we'll realize that in many instances, the issue is our own chosen response to the situation that's set before us. If we think that there is a problem in others, out there, or near, or for, stop and ask yourself a question. Could the problem be me? If you are oppressed by the cares of this world, whether it be sickness or fear, or maybe you are oppressed 
under the control of someone else, someone else's rule or someone else's authority, a cruel treatment. Or maybe you're tired of hearing the spoken unkind words. Or maybe you feel that there's no liberty over your life. Or you feel like there's no liberty in your living condition. If so, I stop by to remind us today that Jesus came to bring the good news to the poor. He came to bind up the brokenhearted. He came to proclaim liberty for the captive. He came to open the prison for those that are in bondage. This day is the day that Jesus is proclaiming to have the favor of the Lord upon our lives. He is the God that can seek vengeance because vengeance belongs to him. He is the God that can comfort those that moan. He is the God that can change your ashes into beauty and your garment of faint spirit into a praise. God wants us to practice justice because we need to be under the influence of prayer and fill with the Holy Spirit. We need to feel the pain of others and their burdens and their affliction. We should know that when we have a vision, the vision will teach us to help others. It will teach us that there's no blessing in helping those or giving to those who can give back to us in return. We should know that God has no respectable person. In this world where there should be justice, in order for justice and love of God to really prevail and operate in the lives and the characters of those who are in charge, whether it be at home, work, school, from the church house to the White House, justice must first live in the mind and the hearts and the soul of every person created by God. Just in case if you are wondering, how do I, how do I display justice? First John 1 and 9 said it like this, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Finally, we have been called to rebuild and transform this world through prayer. Each and every one of us must be careful what we say and do because our words, our thoughts, and our works are like a compass. They have a sense of direction. And the arrow won't point to the north, the south, the east, or the west. But they will point in our direction. And it will tell the world we have done nothing or we have done our best. Thank you. And at the end of the lesson, you will find an attachment for a puzzle and a promise that God gave unto us that would display his love and his justice. May God bless you and keep you, is our prayer. Remember your affirmation. I am blessed when I go in. I am blessed when I go out. I am the head and not the tail. I will live and not bar. I am more in the confidence in Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all my needs in according to his riches and glory. All things work together for the good to them that love God. God is my refuge and my strength, a very, a very present help in trouble. Be safe to the chapel, and remember, watch those hands.